Hello and welcome to this quick clip which goes through dynamic equilibrium, Le Chatelier's principle and constructing the Casey expression for specific reactions in dynamic equilibrium. As always make sure that you've watched it after you've done your independent study and done some notes of your own because it's designed to um, back that up after it's been done rather than take you through it from the beginning. So the first person to come up with the idea of dynamic equilibrium was Henri-Louis Le Chatelier. And he stated that when a system is in dynamic equilibrium and is subjected to a change from outside that system, it will readjust itself so as to minimise the effect of that change and restore equilibrium. In other words, equilibrium shifts to oppose a change. And it's also important to remember that when you're um, explaining equilibrium changes in exam questions, you always try and talk about equilibrium shifts and what change it's opposing so it's opposing an, an increase in temperature or opposing a change in pressure. An example of this might be the position of equilibrium will shift to the right if pressure is increased as the product side has fewer moles of gas. In other words, you need to be careful with the language that you use. So let's take an example of this that you've come across before, the Haber process. So the process was invented by an Austrian chemist called Fritz Haber, or Fritz Haber, and uh, what he was trying to do was produce ammonia, uh, to use this ammonia to manufacture the agricultural fertilizer ammonium nitrate, uh, because certain parts of the world aren't blessed with good quality soils like others, so to try and make farming a bit more um, accessible all over the world, uh, his idea was to make ammonium nitrate and to produce it cheaply using relatively easy to use um, raw materials such as nitrogen and hydrogen. So obviously it's an equilibrium as you can see and what I'd also like to point out is it's what we call a homogeneous equilibrium. And this means it's a, a homogeneous equilibrium in that all the reactants and products are in the same physical state. So in this case they're all gases So, because they're all the same physical state, and they're all gases, their concentration terms can go into the KC expression. However, if one of them happened to be a liquid, then the liquid would not go into the uh, KC expression, because the, uh, the equilibrium would then be what's called heterogeneous. So, if this happened to be a heterogeneous equilibrium, we'd leave out the solid or liquid species concentration terms. So just to quickly summarise there, if all your species in the reaction are gaseous, it's a homogeneous equilibrium, so all species concentration terms are included in the KC expression. If all species were liquid or aqueous, again, it's a homogeneous equilibrium, so all concentration terms, again, are included in the KC expression. So when we're trying to describe an equilibrium that's to do with an industrial process of some kind, we're always trying to think of a cost-effective balance between reaction rate and yield of product. So that will drive anything we try to do when we're talking about um, industrial chemistry, chemical processes. So let's take a closer look at reaction rate first of all. If you have more molecules in the same volume, you get a greater frequency of collisions. If the kinetic energy of the molecules in some of the collisions is greater than the activation energy of the reaction, some of those collisions will also be successful. And this in turn will lead to a higher reaction rate. So if you increase the pressure by either reducing the volume of the container or introducing more reacting uh, particles into the vessel, a greater frequency of collisions will again result. So you can use temperature and pressure to increase the rate of reaction. So to summarise, increasing the temperature will increase the kinetic energy of the molecules. Increasing the pressure will make the likelihood of collisions greater. But reaction rate will only increase if the frequency of successful collisions is increased. 
If we use a catalyst, this offers an alternative route of reaction which has a lower activation energy. This gives a distinct advantage for the industrial chemist because it allows the reaction to be run at a lower temperature, leading to lower energy demand and therefore less use of fossil fuels, fuels and lower CO2 emissions. Not only is this an environmental advantage, it's also an economic one because it's more cost effective. So if we now come back to our original ideas, we've now dealt with reaction rate, but what about the yield? So what we've got to remember is the forward reaction is desired as this gives us our product, which is the ammonia. So I'm going to highlight that statement to draw your attention to it because it's important to think about that whilst we're thinking about increasing the temperature. So bringing Le Chatelier's principle into action here, the forward reaction is exothermic. So in order to oppose this change, the reverse reaction will be favoured. There are fewer moles of gas on the product side, two moles on the right, four moles on the left. So increasing the pressure will favour the forward reaction. But increased pressure is expensive and dangerous to maintain. So what we do is we use what are called compromise conditions. So the compromise conditions that we use in order to find our cost-effective balance between reaction rate and yield of product in this case with temperature it's got to be high enough to secure a reasonable rate of reaction without causing the position of equilibrium to shift too far to the left. That would reduce yield. The pressure is kept high enough to shift the position of equilibrium to the right, but not so high as to be expensive or dangerous to maintain. And the catalyst, finally, is uh, used. This time it's finely divided iron. So the reaction can run at a lower temperature and reduce energy demand and use less fossil fuels. We can also use Kc to explain all of this. So the important thing to remember is Kc is a fixed value for each reaction. By reaching equilibrium and obeying the Chatelier's principle, all chemical equilibria will try to restore Kc. Now Kc can also be thought of as a ratio. It's got a numerator on the top, it's got a denominator on the bottom, which can also be expressed as the ratio of concentration of products to reactants. So if we increase the concentration of one of the components as our first change to this equilibrium, for example, increasing the concentration of ammonia, what happens is the numerator increases. This is the equivalent of extra product being made, or more ammonia being present. And because the ratio is now greater than Kc, the system is no longer in equilibrium. So what has to happen is there has to be a shift in equilibrium in order to restore Kc. The excess ammonia gets used up, which in turn makes more reactants again. So mathematically the denominator increases, the numerator decreases, the value of the ratio falls, until eventually Kc is restored again. So the position of equilibrium shifted to the left in response to extra ammonia ammonia being added. In other words, Le Chatelier's principle was followed. So what happens when you increase the pressure? This is due to the fact that there are more particles present in the same amount of space. This means that all the concentration terms have now increased. There are two concentration terms in the numerator and four concentration terms in the denominator. So in this particular case the ratio is now less than Kc. 
So in order to restore Kc, mathematically the numerator must increase further and the denominator must decrease. In other words, the concentration of product increases and the reactants decrease. And the value of the ratio starts to increase again until eventually Kc and equilibrium are restored. So what has to happen in order for this to take place? So the position of equilibrium shifted to the right in response to increased pressure. The side with fewer moles of gas were favoured, just like you would have predicted last year in your first year chemistry. And Le Chatelier's principle has been followed again. So now let's have a look at the effect of temperature. So as you know, if we increase the temperature, the endothermic direction is favoured, which means that in this reaction, the reverse reaction will be favoured by an increase in temperature because the forward reaction is exothermic because delta RH is negative, as you can see from the top of the screen. The denominator increases in value. Notice what I'm not doing is covering where it says Kc, because what actually happens here is a new Kc value is established. So when equilibrium is restored, a lower Kc value is established at this new temperature. This means that temperature changes must alter Kc. So what happens if you decrease the temperature? So why don't you pause the clip at this point and try to predict it logically, starting from the initial decrease in temperature. Remember, the reaction is exothermic in the forward direction. So this time, the forward reaction must be favoured. So the concentration of product increases, in other words, the numerator. The reactants decrease in value so the denominator de uh, decreases. So what happens next is because you have a bigger number divided by a smaller number, Kc gets bigger at this new temperature. The position of equilibrium has shifted to the right and Le Chatelier's principle has been obeyed. So to summarise the points we've made in this clip, equilibrium position shifts to oppose the changing conditions. We employ compromise conditions in, in industry to balance reaction rate against yield. Kc controls any shifts in position of equilibrium, but is only affected by temperature, not concentration or pressure. So thanks for listening. Hopefully this has uh, pulled it together for you a little bit, and maybe see you soon. Okay, bye.